I am Will Best and I found Manor Farm Godminster on the chalk in Dorset and I have been here all my life and I have been farming it in partnership with Pam, my wife, since 1969. I wasn't going to be a dairy farmer. Um, because when I was a kid, I used to go tractor driving for the arable farmers round about and think it was terribly exciting driving tractors and the bigger the tractor, you know, and all that. And so I became a dairy farmer almost by accident. And, 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 and I hadn't done much milking at all. I mean, I'd helped with cattle, sheep, so I hadn't done much. I'd had always been cows in my life, but I hadn't really thought much about it. So I, I, I found myself in this intimate association with these black and white ladies and, and, and found that I related to it. It just I just related to it really well. We have bred a very resilient type of cow. She's middle sized, she's not big. She's very nimble. She walk up these hills, you know, no trouble at all in all weathers. Um, she's got, you know, a good shaped udders that last, that don't, you know, the udders don't drop and so on, and it's when they drop you tend to get mesitis and so on. Um, and they can go on year after year. And then we rear them outdoors as much as we can. We're lucky with this ground. Keep them out all winter. Go and graze some rake and turnips or something, a bit of straw. If you've got cows in, side, you've got to take the food to them and you've got to take them up back out to the field. If they're grazing, you don't have to. They do it with their own feet and it keeps them healthy. So it, it, it has to be the most efficient system and the most carbon efficient system that actually you could call it carbon friendly farming if you want to be sort of topical. Um, and, and that becomes a, you know, I mean, climate change scares me rigid. I, I, don't, I don't understand how the majority of the world's population seem to blissfully ignore it. Talk about sleepwalking. I mean, what about what happened this last winter with all the wind and rain? It's exactly what these scientists have been predicting is going to happen. Um, and we have to do something about it. And I can't influence whether people spend their lives getting on and off aeroplanes, but I can see what I can do with my own land. And I think I can farm it in a way that produces healthy food, but also takes carbon out of the atmosphere through these grasses and legumes and these grazing cattle, um, grazing and dunging on the ground and the worms and everything taking it down into the soil. It, it, it's just, to my mind, it's got to be right. They're manuring the field as they go across it. Got to be right. So, when you're organic, you, you've got to look at health and medical intervention. And you know some of these big dairy units, they almost have a resident vet now. But, uh, you know, we just don't want to see a vet here. I don't want to spend money on a vet. Um, and uh, we don't, um, Philip, our herdsman, is very, very good. We don't use antibiotics in the dairy herd at all. Philip treats them with homeopathy. And, and he's good, you know, homeopathy is tricky. You, you can't just sort of think, oh, she's got mastitis, I'll give her this stuff. You know, it's, a, it's very subtle. We, he's got dozens of remedies in, in the cupboard that he uses for different things. Because we, we, give, we, give we give it as a powder off a teaspoon as they're coming out from milking or whatever. It has no side effects. It boosts the immune system rather than causes the immune system to deteriorate. And you don't have to throw any milk away, which is worth a lot of money. Um, and it works. If you work with nature and try and get it right, um, a lot of the problems won't, you won't get hammered with the problems, the health problems and, and all that kind of stuff. And then what you produce is going to be healthier for the humans that consume it. And maybe we can we can get a healthier human population as well, possibly.
what gives me the most satisfaction are the people that you bump into somewhere and they say, I remember you, well, I remember came to your farm um, when we were thinking about converting and uh, we thought, right, yeah, we can do this. And that's what gives me the most satisfaction. When they come up to you and say that, um, th that is hugely satisfying because you've, you have hopefully had a more influence beyond just the 250 acres.